This lesson <clears throat> is actually 831, which is the quadric formula. However, we're going to quit uh, the finish of I, which is completing the web. The biggest thing about this lesson is to do this. I want you to be able to take these six graphs here, and I want you to be able to use the information you're given, except right here, and backwards track that to find out which of these six rules it goes with. So, again, you're going to take these x-intercepts right here, and backtrack that to find out which of these um, rules does it go with. So go ahead and pause the video and do that. And when you get back, we'll be switching on to 831. So pause the video now. Thank you. All right, now that you have paused the video, now we're going to be moving on to today's lesson, which is the quadratic formula. So there it is. If you look at this uh, rule right here, x squared minus 3x minus 7, and if I asked you to find the roots of that or the x-intercepts, um, you would do that by factoring normally because that's what you know. The problem is, is that when you try to factor this one, it's not factorable. Nothing will work to factor that. Does that mean that this one does not cross the x-intercepts? Um, well, in fact, no, it doesn't. In fact, I'm going to show you what the graph of this looks like if I can find it here someday soon. I believe this is it right here. There we go. Here's the graph of it. You can clearly see it crosses the x-intercept somewhere around 4.5, give or take, and somewhere around negative 1.5, give or take. Is it exactly there? Well, let's find out. So here's the graph. It does work. It does cross the x-intercepts. The problem is it is not factorable. So what do we do? All right, well, that's what brings us up to the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is, and there we go, um, the quadratic formula takes our information, which you're going to notice that this equation right up here is in ax squared form. We've got the ax squared plus bx. In this case, our b is a negative number, which is minus 3x, plus c. And c also is a negative number, which is negative 7 equals zero. This is what is called your standard form, okay? So, what we need are these numbers A, B, and C. Well, A right here would be 1, B would be our negative 3, and C would be our negative 7. And then we have to be able to take those numbers and plug them into our fancy formula. This is a formula I want you to memorize. I want you to know it very well. Okay, I don't care how you do it. I don't care if you go on the internet, look up a, a square root song, or make up your own. Negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Don't care how you get to it, but I want you to memorize that. Don't be, uh, don't be appalled when I ask you to do that from time to time uh, and just spit out that formula. So now that we have our formula, we have our opposite of b, and we know that b is negative 3, we have our plus or minus b squared. So you can see I took my b term here, I plugged it in. I took the rest of my terms, my b squared, my 4 times a times c all over 2 times a, and I plugged in all my numbers. Now, I always start with this part right here. Hold on one second. Let me grab a highlighter pen here for us. There we go. I start with that part right there. Because this part here tells me everything I need to know. This is what's called the discriminant, okay? And when you plug in your numbers to the discriminant and solve for it, if that number comes out to be a positive, like right here it's positive 37, if it's a positive, then it really is factor, or now not factorable, but it, it is solvable. There are x-intercepts on that. However, if that number is a negative, then it's not solvable. So let's see, Mr. Anderson, what are you talking about there? Let's try and pull up some, uh, let's try and just pull up something so I can kind of give you a little brief overview if my computer will keep up with me here. Uh, let's go to my content, pictures, let's pull up a graph here. There's a graph. in that page a little bit. Okay, and then where 
surface. All right, bring this back over here. So, in fact, let's move. Whoa, don't want that. Edit, undo line. Let's go back to that right there. All right, so here's what this means. Here's my parabola. In fact, we're going to shrink this parabola up a little bit. We're going to make it look more like that. And that's pretty tall, so let's make it look more like that right there. So if we take this parabola here, and if we have a positive discriminant, then you can see this parabola would cross the x-intercept. If the discriminant were not positive, instead negative, it still makes a parabola, but that means that your uh, graph would look something like this, where you can see it would not cross the x-axis. So negative discriminant would be up here somewhere. Positive discriminant would cross the x-axis like that. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So again, you're going to memorize the quadratic formula, which is the opposite of b, opposite of b plus or minus. Hold on here, I've got to go yell at Shondale. Shondale, shut your music off! Thank you. All right. The opposite of b plus or minus, square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Make sure you have that memorized. And that is how you solve it. You plug in those numbers. Let's quickly go through, see if there's anything else here I want you to do. Oh, you will notice, you'll notice there's always two x-intercepts. Well, there's usually two x-intercepts. And that's where the plus and the minus side of this come into. When you do solve through this, you're going to have the positive side here, the negative side here. All that is meaning, that doesn't mean that your answers are positive or negative. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they will look like a positive and negative one. Sometimes they'll both end up over here, and sometimes they'll both end up being over here. That's just fine. The plus and the minus just means you're going to have two, one, two intercepts. It is possible that you're only going to have one x-intercept, and that is if your discriminant turns out to be zero. If your discriminant turns out to be zero, that would look like this right there, where it comes down, it touches the x-intercept, and then it goes back up. This doesn't happen often, but it certainly does happen. And there's a special case for that that we'll get into as well. But that right there is if your discriminant turns out to be zero. All right, moving on. Not doing that page. Yeah, perfect. And here's what I want you to do then. So when you come into class tomorrow, I want you to solve these four right here. Um, I want you to solve for the x uh, for the x-intercepts by using the quadratic formula. What is the quadratic formula? Can you remember it right now? Go ahead and think about it. Did you say it's the opposite of b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a? Hope so. So use that formula and solve those four and then we will see you in class tomorrow. Have a good night. Bye-bye.